What is up guys? Thanks for watching as always. Uh, we got a new video with some more lure making uh, this time. Um, I had a request to make a small stick bait for someone who fishes often in Florida for snook and Jack Ravel. Um, so yeah, let's not uh, beat around the bush. That's what we're going to do. Uh, it's going to be um, a walking the dock stick bait that you can also fish subsurface. Uh, I'll also be adding a tail spinner to the lure as well. Um, just as a surface prop bait sort of thing. Uh, now obviously we start with designing the lure and then cutting it out on the bandsaw. That's all pretty straightforward. Um, it's a pretty simple design. I've made dozens and dozens of these type of little stick baits. Um, so I don't need like a, a stencil or anything to um, design them. I'll just go straight onto the wood. Save some time. Um, Bansel, pretty straightforward as always, uh, just following out the drawn line, and we go from there. Now as you see here, I'll leave the bottom piece on. Uh, we will cut it out to a certain extent, but because we want to make the side cuts as well, we want to have a flat surface to um, uh, make those cuts on. So here I'll be cutting out the bottom, but not completely, uh, so that the flat surface of the piece of wood is still connected makes it a lot easier to work with the, the wood and the bandsaw. Just a little bit of a cut at the front and that'll be it. Perfect. Now this wood is way too thick uh, for it to be even remotely shaped into a stick bait with a, uh, a knife from here so um, we have to determine the center point uh, so we can put uh, sight lines on there and we can cut them out with the bandsaw as well I did have some thinner wood lying around but that was too thin uh, so I had to obviously resort to the thicker wood otherwise I had to make it a two piece and with these little stick baits it's going to be uh, much harder to do big stick baits you kind of want to do it uh, makes it very easy to uh, fit the wire in as well uh, but with these little ones, uh, I prefer just making a slot in the belly. So we have to tweak the sight design a little bit. As always, I fold a piece of paper in half to make sure it's symmetrical on both sides. Uh, determine the center point, and we go from there. Now you can see where that flat surface comes into play very well. Makes it a lot easier to make a, a good cut line. If it was wobbly, you might not have a straight cut, and uh, well, your whole design will be ruined then. You can start from um, scratch again. Now I've noticed in these recordings that uh, some of the way, sometimes I uh, hold the piece of wood in a not very safe way, so um, be very careful if you do uh, use a bandsaw, and don't copy my moves over. I wasn't aware of it. Uh, yeah, just so you know, heads up. So once that design is done, uh, we can cut, carve out the uh, the rest of the sight lines to make it a more rounded shape. Get rid of the the angles, and um, kind of go from there. It's a pretty standard process that you'll see time and time again whenever I make a lure. Once we get that all sorted, um, we can finish it off with some rough sandpaper. Just make sure that it's symmetrical and um, you can never waste enough time on um, making sure that everything is symmetrical, everything is uh, in line with each other, otherwise your stick bait is not going to swim properly. A couple of final touches before we do the sanding. And that's good to go. I'm just using, I believe this is 60 grit sandpaper. This is a pretty tough wood. This is a hardwood. Um, so we need some um, rougher grain sandpaper for it. Um, one, it makes the job a lot quicker. And two, 
the wood can handle it you don't leave uh, um, a lot of scratches if it was soft wood you, it would leave a lot of scratches uh, on top of that we finish it off with a finer grain anyway so it doesn't really matter too much so here's one of these uh, dangerous undertakings that you probably shouldn't copy over you're better off uh, grabbing a handsaw it's much safer than this uh, but here I'm creating the slot and the stick bait to fit the wire um, I'm comfortable doing it this way but then watching the footage again it seems a little bit um, dangerous to do let's put it that way so um, I might think twice again before I do it I never had any problems with this band so at all it's always been good but um, yeah, it's easy to, to mess up so uh, just grab a, a handsaw instead don't do this on the bandsaw and then obviously the middle part I wasn't able to cut out completely uh, but I was able to grab a, a box cutter and cut that piece out we made the gap a little bit wider too, so that the wire would fit in better. Uh, that's not finished up yet, but we're getting there. So here we've got some, uh, I think this is 14 gauge wire, or 16 gauge, one of the two. Um, it's pretty heavy duty wire, but I wouldn't, wouldn't want it to be flimsy either, because um, you know those Jack Ravel, they've got a lot of jaw pressure, quite similar to GTs, and GTs are Re renowned for destroying lures so uh, here I've sped the process up a little bit and uh, you can see what the eventual wire looks like um, I'm going to have to straighten up the pins before I tighten them off and uh, yep that all fits so next up is just to tighten off the wire you can do that with thread you can do it through welding uh, you can even do it through um, epoxy on your lighter lures, I wouldn't recommend it for your giant GT lures. Um, but uh, a lure like this and wiring like this can uh, be fixed in with um, wire and wire line and uh, epoxy as well. That fits very well. So after we fix it all in and we put some balance weights in the tail and the belly. Uh, she's ready for some more sanding. Uh, now, what important uh, was with this particular stick bait is that it was balanced extremely well. Um, I think surface lures, especially walking the dog lures, are renowned for um, missing a lot of bites. You don't really um, the, the conversion rate isn't super high, so I wanted it to be very well balanced, and you'll see that a bit later in the video. Um, so since this lure is for a friend of mine, uh, I wanted to make sure it looked really good. So I'm doing some face carving. Uh, if it was my own stick bait, I probably wouldn't have done it. Simply because it was a very tedious process. Um, you have to make some very small cuts. It's very easy to mess up. It takes a long time. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a walking the dog stick bait. Yes, it's going to be very well balanced, but... Um, there's actually value in it being very well balanced versus having a face cover. Either way, it's uh, going to look very nice. This took freaking ages. You have to be very careful. And I didn't have an uh, X-Acto knife anymore, so that made it even more difficult. But, eventually we got there. And if, an, if the uh, face carving wasn't tedious enough, sanding it all down was even more difficult. You have to be very careful um, where you sand and how um, you sand the surface as well, especially with these little lures. I'm used to uh, much bigger stick baits. I've done smaller stick baits before, but I usually leave them uh, flat faced. Oh well. A bit more experience under the belt, I guess. So here we're doing the sanding, this is 320 grid sandpaper, very fine, want to make sure everything is nice and smooth for the foiling, 
uh, any bumps that you have in the wood or any uneven surfaces are going to stick out when you foil it. So uh, take your time to um, make sure everything is smoothed out properly. So to check for the uh, bumps and uneven surfaces, I've spray painted it with some uh, self-etching spray paint. Um, really bumps up any uneven surface and it makes it very evident when you have to uh, change it over, sand down a little bit more or make a different cut. Uh, and now we're doing the foiling on the face and we're just making the cut lines from the mouth, the lips, the gill plates and the eye sockets as well. And then we transition into uh, foiling on the side. And because this is a very small swim bait, uh, the scales have to be much smaller to make it look nice. So we're going to do uh, one millimeter wide scale cuts, which takes a long time. So I've done one side right here. And what I mean with one millimeter cuts is every line that I uh, cut is going to be separated about one millimeter from the other line, cut line. So usually I do about two mils, but those are bigger stick baits. So. Uh, I think each side took me about 12 minutes, so that's why we sped up this video uh, about 1,200 percent to uh, make it bearable to watch, I guess. <laughs> Now we cut the lateral line, and then we do the cross cut over the lateral line. That's in my opinion the neatest looking cut, together with uh, just a full crossover cut. And there you have it. That's about 12 minutes worth of work in about 40 seconds. So now we're uh, ready to put the foil onto the stick bait itself. Obviously all the foiling isn't necessary, but I want it to look nice and a bit of flesh on the lure uh, is never a bad thing. take your time with this it's super easy to mess up um, just start on the tail make sure that the tail is stuck on and then make sure it the rest of the tape aligns right where you want it towards the head because uh, once you stick it on you cannot uh, back it off whatsoever um, either you take it off and your foil gets messed up and you take some some of the base paint off um, or you don't take it off and your foil ends up on the top of its head and there's no straight foiling job so yeah make sure that you uh, be very careful and now since this is a very round lure I had to make a fair couple of incisions to make sure that the foil actually shaped to the body well um, but that was easy enough um, you always want to be very careful before you try to stick on the foil where it won't stick or where it won't fit to the body you're going to get bumps and uneven sections um, so be very careful only stick the foil onto where it can actually stick here I'm just tidying it up on the, on the other side and we want to make sure that the foil transitions nicely into the gill plate and onto the back that it's at least somewhat symmetrical so um, any additional bumps on the top uh, we can cut off as well and we'll be doing another spray paint over the back as well so that it uh, transitions nicely from color into uh, silver scale pattern so that's how it looks after the foiling job's done obviously the belly is still exposed and we'll be spray painting that with uh, metallic paint before and after the first epoxy coat 
and then the back's gonna get the blue and green coat and it could literally resemble a lot of uh, different bait fish that they have in Florida so whether that's your mullet, uh, some sardine um, this one's gonna get some pretty big eyes so goggle eyes might be a bit far-fetched but that's another bait fish to have over there now before I spray paint the back I'm actually going to uh, do a little bit of hand painting uh, where the gills are I want a couple of uh, dots uh, just above the lower line so it kind of looks like a sardine uh, and I want to emphasize the eye socket as well just to give it an extra bit of uh, contrast and pop uh, around the face carve area Just so you know, uh, I do go extra lengths to make this lure look nice, but to make it a good lure, uh, you don't have to do any of this, this at all. Uh, balancing a lure is much more important. Anyway, here we've got uh, the lure before epoxy. We're just fitting the eyes on right here. Looks pretty good. The eyes are a little bit big for the head, but that's okay. I want to make sure everything is aligned straight. It might sound silly, but even the smallest um, differences on this bait uh, will make it not swim true, so it will be unbalanced. So uh, an eye that sits a bit further down than the other can make a big difference. Anyway, here you see the product of um, balancing the lure as well as possible. Um, in my opinion, a good surface lure is pretty much um, has pretty much the same density as the water. Um, snook are suction feeders, quite like barramundi and bass. Uh, and if something floats like foam, like a spook or something, um, it's much harder for that fish to suck in the lure. Either way, here's the swimming action. That's just your regular walk the dock style. Um, if you wind it a little bit harder, it'll actually swim underwater as well. And you can even fish it with a straight retrieve. So here you'll see it dart underwater. That's with a bit faster of a retrieve. And not as much slack line. And that's more on a, a steadier retrieve there. It has a a lot of tendency to dive down so it looks very good uh, you can also fish it with a tail spinner uh, we'll be uh, given that one with the lure um, props very nicely so pretty happy with the result anyways thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed and uh, please subscribe that'd be awesome thanks